What's going on guys, it's Eric. Uh, today let's talk about the Pentax 645. Okay. So if you've watched this channel or followed me on social media at all, you know that probably my favorite camera, I guess I was gonna say film camera, but probably my favorite camera that I've ever used is my Pentax 6.7. Uh, it's a giant medium format camera. It shoots 120 film in a 6x7 format. It's big, it's heavy, it's sort of built like a, like a giant SLR. I guess it is a giant SLR, but sort of like a giant 35 millimeter camera. But it just takes beautiful, beautiful photographs and, and it is really a pleasure to use. The 645 is, I guess, sort of its little brother. And in some ways, it's very similar. And in other ways, it's very, very different. So the Pentax 645 is a camera that was originally released by Pentax out of Japan in 1984. So I was one year old when this camera came out. Uh, it's a very plasticky feeling camera right off the bat, especially when I contrast it with like my Pentax 6.7 or my RB67. It definitely feels like something from the 80s. Um, it's certainly solid feeling, but it definitely has more of like a plasticky uh, newer feel to it, which might appeal to you. It's not my favorite sort of aesthetic, but it definitely is lighter and, and easier to handhold. So being a 645 camera, this is going to shoot uh, 120 film in 6x45 format. Uh, I think that the biggest advantages you're going to get out of 6x45 are, you know, versus 35 millimeter, you're obviously getting much, much higher resolution, much higher quality images. You also get that medium format uh, depth of field and that kind of unique look that medium format cameras give you. Uh, and versus something like a 6.7 or, or even you know square format or, or 6x9, whatever, you're gonna get more exposures. You're gonna get uh, 16 exposures out of a Rolla 120 versus you know like nine out of my Pentax 6.7 or 10 out of my RB67, that makes a difference. If you're shooting a couple rolls, um, if you're going out for a day, the extra six exposures per roll does make a difference. Now this camera is actually powered by AA batteries, which is really bizarre. If you pop this guy open right here, you can see them right there. It uses six AA batteries at any given time. Um, I don't know, it's just kind of weird. They go right in the grip there, they click in. The 645 is not modular versus something like the RB67 or you know a Hasselblad, um, you're pretty much set. You cannot put a waist level viewfinder on here. This is built in. You cannot put exchangeable backs on here. This uses sort of, I don't know what you would call this. You pop this guy open, slide it out, and you can place the film in there. It's actually pretty nice and, and easy to swap in new rolls of film on this guy, but uh, you don't have the option of preloading them and swapping them on the fly like you do with the RB67 or a Hasselblad. So being a newer and you know more plasticky, more modern camera, you get some modern conveniences with this. Um, this camera does have a built-in meter, which so far as I can tell it is pretty accurate. Um, you can just go in here, you have these old timey kind of displays on here, I don't know, what are they, LCDs? You can go in and set the ISO, you can uh, set it to different modes, uh, do expo uh, exposure compensation on there. It's motorized, so once you load the film in there, it's gonna auto advance it, get you ready to go, and then advance from exposure to exposure uh, until you're done. That's actually pretty nice. It, it makes a substantial difference in, in terms of ease of use. Uh, the grip on the side does make this pretty easy to handhold. It feels good. Um, it's a manual focus camera, but I found focusing this 75 millimeter lens to be pretty easy. Uh, Sven Davison, who sent me this camera, again, big thank you uh, to you, check his stuff out. Uh, he sent me this camera with two lenses, so it came with this 75 millimeter, which is sort of analogous to like a, I think like a 45 on a uh, 35 millimeter camera. It's a wide normal. Um, he also sent me uh, a 150, which is like a, slightly short portrait lens. Um, I haven't used that one as much just because it's not as versatile and I've found this to be a really good camera just to kind of take out and shoot on a day out. Uh, but both of them, uh, when I've used them, I've gotten good results. And uh, what I want to do is share some of the photos that I've taken with this camera to give you kind of an idea of the aesthetic of the look that you can get out of this, uh, we can go through it. I've been shooting this for a few months now, so I've, I'm pretty well acquainted with it. I do like this camera a lot, and I'd like to kind of go into why that is. So uh, without further ado, let's look at some photos. 
<laughs> All right, let's take a look at some photographs here. So the first set of photographs are from Albany Comic Con. Now, uh, I was there to uh, do video. One of my coworkers gave a panel speech on video games and asked if I could come record it uh, with my uh, Sony a7 III, so I did. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to bring the Pentax along and, and take some pictures. Now, these are all on uh, Kodak. Portra 400. The light was very challenging and if I were to shoot these again I probably would either bring a flash um, or a faster film. But uh, you know these were the first photographs I ever took with the camera and some of them are kind of cool. There's a, a Golden Girls gift box. Now these photographs were taken in downtown Syracuse. Now, this is very different. Uh, there was a lot of light. It was the middle of the day. I kind of just walked around the downtown area and took pictures. These are mostly, uh, with a couple of exceptions coming up, stopped down pretty far. I think like F11, uh, F16, something along those lines. It was a bright day out. Uh, this is Kodak Tri-X. I was really just trying to see, you know, what kind of sharpness, uh, how the tones looked. Of course, Tri-X always handles highlights really nicely, but uh, these are pretty cool. I mean, I, they're snapshots, you know, they look like photographs taken by somebody just walking around taking pictures, but uh, but I think they turned out pretty well and, and are pretty cool. This photo was taken uh, inside. There's a, a record store called Soundgarden, and this is taken in low light, wide open at 2.8. I think it illustrates one of the best advantages <laughs> of the 645 versus like the Pentax 67 in that because it is so much smaller, and so much lighter and you don't have that giant mirror to you know slap around in there you're able to hand hold it and take sharp pictures at substantially slower shutter speeds so you know I've been able to kind of get away taking photographs with the Pentax at you know 1 60th of a second but the Pentax 6.7 that is but with the Pentax 645 it's way, way easier. And uh, I think that can be a real advantage, especially if you're trying to photograph faster moving subjects or you, you know that light is going to be an issue. These photographs were taken with uh, Fuji Pro 400H, intentionally overexposed to shoot for that sort of pastel, dreamy look. Now this is downtown Troy. Uh, this photograph and the next few were taken in Saratoga Springs. Uh, it was early spring, so Obviously, the fountains weren't flowing yet. Uh, the trees hadn't, you know, bloomed in full, and it was still kind of gloomy with the the remnants of winter hanging on. And I think these are kind of cool. As you can see, again, the out of focus areas are creamy and beautiful, and just the way it handles those transla uh, transitions is is really elegant. I I'm really really impressed with the way that this camera moves from sharp to to out of focus and and how beautiful it looks and there's a couple of portraits that I took with it that I think illustrate that as well uh, this is just we went to an antique store somewhere in Vermont and I thought that this was kind of a neat little still life now these photographs were taken in Sedona Arizona and it was actually raining we were at this little you know touristy artist village uh, in Sedona and it started raining and it was misting and you can actually you can see the rain uh, on the top of this image kind of coming down lightly. It wasn't heavy enough to make it unpleasant and you know it cooled everything down. It was actually really really beautiful and I thought the light was really nice. Uh, these are on Portra 400 I believe either Portra 400 or 160. I'm, I'm not certain uh, but yeah I think that the colors look really nice gives you an idea of, of what that 75 millimeter lens really looks like. Obviously, it's a normal lens, but I think it effectively is a little bit wider than a 50 millimeter on something like a you know, 35 millimeter camera. But yeah, they're pretty nice. <laughs> Lots of photographs of Casey standing in parking lots. These photographs were taken on Portra 400 at the uh, Desert Botanical Gardens outside of Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, again, I was sort of shooting for that sort of dreamy look in direct sunlight. Honestly, I think they might have looked better if I had shot something a little bit crunchier like Ektar or, you know, shot Portra but maybe metered it at box speed. These are, I believe, a couple of stops overexposed intentionally. I don't know, your mileage will vary, obviously. You can tell me if you like these or not. Now these last few are back in New York State. Uh, this is my sister Morgan, who if you've been a long time viewer of the channel, you might be familiar with. She's been in a couple of videos. Uh, this is her with her little son. He's 
I guess almost a year old, maybe. Uh, I did family portraits for them and I really like the way this one turned out. It's on Portra 400, uh, overexposed. So this photograph is from the summit of Giant Mountain uh, in the Adirondacks. It's one of the 46 Adirondack high peaks. Uh, there's a couple of things about this that I think make this interesting. So for starters, I only had the normal lens. I didn't have a wide angle lens, which is what I would normally want to shoot something like this on. Uh, I do find that shooting a wider lens can sometimes minimize how large mountains look, and this was a really beautiful place to be. Uh, the other thing is, this is Velvia 50. You can't tell from this photograph, but there was actually a storm moving in from the right of that image. It caught us on the way down, and we got rained on for 10 minutes pretty hard. I was concerned with Velvia and the highlights and the, you know, kind of the transition from the shadows to the highlights. In all honesty, I think it handled it pretty well. Um, I am, am never successful shooting slide film. Just as a general rule, I'm no good at it. Uh, and I think my scanner has difficulty scanning it. So with all that in mind, um, I think it's kind of a cool photo. I don't hate this photograph. Let me know what you think. Do you hate it? I don't know. <laughs> don't tell me if you hate it. You'll hurt my feelings. So there you have it. The Pentax 645. It's a cool little camera. I like it. It's neat looking. It takes good photos. Um, they're pretty cheap, I think, relatively speaking. You should be able to pick one of these up, a kit for well, well under a thousand dollars. You know, when you look at what the six, seven setups and, and God forbid a Hasselblad, what those are selling for, you can get into one of these for much, much less money. And they're great. They're a cool little cameras. So uh, I would highly recommend this camera. Have you shot this? Uh, what do you think? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Uh, did I miss something incredibly important that I should have brought up? I almost always do. <laughs> so thank you. So Whoa, I turned it on. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you liked this video, you guys know the drill. You've seen a YouTube video before. Uh, click the little like button. Subscribe. I don't. Does YouTube still do the the bell? If so, click that thing. You can see when I put stuff up. It really honestly does help. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon. What's up? Thank you so much for watching my uh, YouTube video. <laughs> if you're new to the channel and you liked this, uh, poke around. There should be more stuff popping up around my fat head here and you might find something you like. I do a lot of old camera reviews, film stock reviews. Uh, see what you think. <laughs> Whether you're new to the channel or not, uh, come back next week. I'm going to be doing a video about Kodak Ektachrome. Right on time. <laughs> see you soon. Bye.